Yeah, morning. You know, suspect, suspect you know, some of you might have questions uh, regarding my father-in-law, his presence at the game Saturday night. Want to go ahead and address this. Got a statement for you guys that I'll read. You know, one, just want everybody to understand uh, my father-in-law, his presence on the field after the game the other night is, is something uh, that created a distraction. And I, I do, I apologize for that. That was, that was not the intent at all. Uh, the intent was just to, to celebrate with, with my family. Um, do want to correct some reports that, uh, that claimed he had a sideline pass. There was not a sideline pass given out. He was actually on the field only when, when other families were, were down there and were present. Uh, you know, Joe Castiglione, Coach Venables, both have, have uh, addressed concerns with me, have talked to me about it, and, and again, can, can make sure that everybody understands that this is something that, that will not come up again. So with that, wanted to start with that and then get into questions. Okay. Let's start far right side, Ryan Chapman. Ask about the running game, two things. Yeah. What do you want to see to get some more consistency with the running game? And then what needs to happen for more explosive plays about the running game? Yeah, the, I think the biggest thing is our, our guys got to continue to strain to win one on ones. You know, we we were just hot and cold. Um, I, I think I said it after the game, we were a little too conservative at times. You know, probably should have thrown it around a little bit more um, to give our guys a little bit of air and, and give us a chance to make some plays on the perimeter. Um, but we do. We just got to continue to to win one on ones, get guys in rhythm, uh, really bring along two and and twenty seven this week, uh, while continuing to to let Tawi get production and having Marcus as a as a big part of it. So I do love the fact that we've got a stable. You know, we got four guys that we trust that we can count on. Uh, but we do want to make more explosive plays in the run game for sure. So we'll go down the line if you guys have questions, George. Jeff, just going back to your, your statement. I know Joe put out a statement saying that there was a, a boundary uh, previously that was maybe crossed, not crossed. What was maybe that, that boundary? Yeah, again, I've, I've said kind of what I was going to say on the matter today, and, and we're going to talk about uh, talk about Tulsa or SMU. Uh, Eric, Eric, do you have one? Yeah, I'll ask you about the tailbacks. Is it possible that Tawi is your best tailback? I mean, that doesn't strike us as possible, but is it possible? Well, he he had the most production Saturday, you know. So, again, I do like the fact that we got four guys. We got four guys that are incredibly capable. Uh, we've got uh, guys that have a lot of trust with the entire staff and, and I think can play at any given time. So, uh, the stress, again, is being able to get two and 27 going as they've, uh, they've worked themselves back into being in a really good position. presence on the field really engulfed the news cycle and that was kind of the biggest surprise yeah, I'm and again I'm not going to comment anymore on it uh, said what I wanted to say and and uh, we'll move forward yeah, any other questions, to, Eric? yeah let me go back to football then yeah uh, just conservative play you used the word conservative when you talked about the game plan against SMU on Saturday night uh, third and seven run play trying yeah. to run the ball and they no pass attempts 20 yards or Further. Right. Can you talk a little bit about going conservative, and do you look back and wish you were a little bit more aggressive at times? Yeah, and mentioned that I think right after the game, and then again the third and seven deal, we're in four down zone. Really liked the run that we were in right there. Got a chance to actually have a, a big one, um, but definitely should have been at minimum fourth and two where we're going to go for it, and uh, you know we don't get it executed. Um, so that that was something that obviously was incredibly frustrating in the moment. But again, staying aggressive, uh, making sure that we are spreading the ball around and, and giving our guys a chance. Because I thought Dylan operated really well. He was really clean. Um, and then just with the chunk plays, SMU did a really good job of really running out on us, playing uh, with a deep post safety and discouraging some, some shot game. James? You, in the game, you ended up playing Everett as much as you did Tulsa. Yeah. Maybe even a little more. How did you feel like your offensive line did? And was that moved because of an injury, or you just like Everett a lot and you wanted to play? You know, when you put the tape on, our guys played incredibly hard, and they they tried to be incredibly physical. We did not play very clean, and we, you know, we couldn't get out of our own way at times. And that wasn't just up front; that was 
really spread out through through the entire unit. Guys, you put the tape on, and guys were playing incredibly hard and playing incredibly tough, but we didn't execute cleanly. So Coach V talks about it all, all the time, right? But it's effort with technique. You know, it's playing incredibly hard and incredibly physical, but having great technique and fundamentals inside of what you're doing on every snap. And, and that'll give us a chance to have the success we want to have. So um, all of us got to play cleaner. Uh, I am proud of the way we tried to play. We just did not play very clean. Did you talk about Tulsa's defense too? Yeah, these guys, they've got five starters that are transfers. Uh, boundary safety is a guy that's a, a, a leader for them, you know, with only three returning starters. But um, again, these, they've done a nice job in the portal as well, being able to go address some needs. They've got really good looking guys on the back end. They're not playing a ton of guys on defense. Uh, but a group, when you watch them, man, jumps off the tape that they're playing with incredibly high motors uh, and a lot of toughness. So it'll be a, be a challenge as we go on a row for the first time this year. You mind? Jeff, in terms of this offense, we see how fast it moves. How important is Andrew Rain making a move that fast? And, and where has he grown in terms of the communication and yeah. making it? Yeah, being year two for Rain has been huge, man. He uh, He's taken the... Uh, the tempo part of it personally and, and really tried to put it on his shoulders to put us in good positions and being able to go play fast. And really, he's the key to to making it go. So um, again, proud of him uh, for how his mentality has changed in year two from a tempo standpoint. And, and he's done a nice job with it. He sort of explained to me the relationship with Dylan on, in those moments. Yeah. Yeah, those guys got really good communication. Again, it's it's year two for them, uh, understanding each other and how we're going to play fast and go attack, and then when we need to slow down, how we're going to do that and uh, being able to execute whether we're going fast or whether we're not. But uh, again, Rame's mentality has been really good with that. Hey, yeah, Jeff, how important was that catch and run for Jaleel on Saturday? Didn't have a catch the first game, didn't have a lot of targets in the second one, yeah. come through in a moment like that. That was huge, and he did exactly what we we're expecting him to do. You know, catch a football and then really turn into a type of running back with with it in his hands. So, uh, was proud of him for just continuing to play and uh, made a great play. Jesse, Jeff wanted to ask you about uh, Andrell. I think two game through two games, he has ten catches. Just maybe, yeah. how have you seen that rapport with him and Dylan? I know it's early in the season. Yeah. But how have you seen that develop through the first couple of weeks? Yes, yeah, it's been really good. And Drell has. Uh, He's for whatever reason, it's just end up. It's ended up finding him at times, you know. And he's uh, he's made the most of his opportunities. You know, he had to drop the second play of the game, and then after that, what I liked is that he really responded. We come back to him two snaps later and, and throw a slant to him. And it's a really competitive play. He makes a nice play, and so was proud of him just to be able to get out of his own way after the drop on the second snap of the game to to go put together a really nice game. Guys got involved week one, yeah. maybe not a ton of catches week two. But what have you learned about that wide receiver? We've got depth, you know, and I think that's the best part of it. I think we talked a, a lot about it uh, in fall camp, and now here we are after after two weeks and feel good about, uh, you know, a good number of guys in that room. And so look forward to them continuing to grow and, and playing in a bunch of different roles in a bunch of different ways. Okay, second row left, Randall. So talking about their zero room, Jaquez Petaway led the team with nine catches at week yeah. one. You know, part of it was Drake was back healthy. Uh, obviously, we lost Drake early in, in week one. Uh, he comes back, and, and with the way the game was going, uh, wanted to lean on some older guys that had played a bunch of ball, obviously. And uh, Drake was a guy that I wasn't quite ready to get out of the game full uh, full tilt. So uh, that's, that's kind of how that played out. Yeah, I, th I thought he played really tough. You know, we have the after we have great field position after the turnover, we've or the the pump block. You know, we got a chance to to get him on the field, and we've got a really good run. We don't execute it, but I thought he did a really nice job of playing tough and and playing physical. Obviously, we want to convert on the fourth and one. Uh, that's a situation where we had opportunities to get it on second, and third down, didn't, 
and um, you know he, he gets put back in that situation. So mention this after the game, but that's that's just invaluable experience for him. Uh, so just proud of his toughness and, and his mindset right now. Let's go back to Eric Bailey. Coach, can you talk about your relationship with Kevin Wilson and just how yeah. you grew with him at Oklahoma? Yeah, obviously spent a bunch of time here uh, with, with Wilson and, and his success as he's moved forward. Uh, he's had a ton of success you know, everywhere he's been offensively and, and done a great job. So uh, have, have followed from afar, of course, and, and look forward to, to getting up there Saturday. Any favorite stories as a student assistant with him? He was consistent, you know. He he was he was uh, <clears throat> he coached hard and and uh, he uh, he was a guy that that found ways to create an advantage, you know, and that's something that I always respected. Back to James Hill. Dylan in the game throws four touchdowns, and that's really a pretty good game. But then when you look at it, his yards per catch or throw was it probably where it normally is? But right. What did you think of his game? I thought he played clean. I thought he did a nice job scrambling vertically in the pocket. Uh, did a nice job creating completions. Uh, you know, he's, he finishes the day stat line. I think 19 a, a 27. We got three drops on the day where you you want those back. But man, he he didn't put the ball in harm's way. He took great care of the rock and felt like he did a really nice job just distributing and putting us in in good situations in the throw game. Uh, Jeff, just Gavin Salchuk, I know he was available and I think he played a few snaps. Yeah. Do you hope to increase his role as, as, as the season progresses? Absolutely, and talked about it earlier, but we want to get 2-27 and 27 going. You know, we, we absolutely do. So that uh, that's something that will be important for us this week as we move forward and making decisions for Saturday. Is he, is he feeling healthy? Yeah, he feels good. And Ryan? Build on that. Just what does that look like for you and, and Coach Murray to get those guys up and run outside of the health element and then we can practice. Yeah, it's going to be great that we walk into this afternoon's practice with two guys that we know are really, really healthy. Um, we were able to get them some good work last week, but now moving forward, we feel really good about where they're at physically. So uh, again, looking forward to getting those guys going. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.